We are a generation who loves God. We are a generation who trusts in God. We will always hope in God. Greetings, greetings, greetings in the wonderful, precious, holy name of Jesus. It is that time of the year again, and it is so good to be here. It is such a nice time of the year, because it is a time period that we celebrate the birth of Jesus. And what matters the most is why we personally celebrate there are many people who say different things concerning Christmas. But what matters the most is what you are celebrating in your heart. And in this time, Jesus is the reason for the season. On this Christmas Eve, I want to share something that is so important with you. And the title of my message is, Your Calling is Important. And this is why it's so essential that you follow the leading of God concerning your purpose and your destiny and you stay in the will of God. Let us begin by welcoming the Holy Spirit and I'll show you from the scripture two passages of scripture that show us how important willingness and obedience to the call of God is. Right now, in your own words, welcome the Holy Spirit in the place we are watching. Precious Holy Spirit of God, we welcome you. I welcome you right here in studio and in the place where my dear friend is watching. Speak to my dear friend through this word and help my dear friend to walk in their purpose and destiny. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. My dear friend, each and every one of us, through our calling, through our purpose, through our destiny, through the divine mandate that God has placed on our life, play a role in the bigger picture. And our short lifespans that we live on this earth, the time that we live, the years that we are given, it is very short compared to eternity. But as we walk in our purpose and destiny in this lifetime, it contributes to the bigger picture. I want to start by reading from the Gospel of Luke chapter 1 from verse 26 to verse 35. It says, Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. To a virgin pledged to be married to a man whose name was Joseph of David's house. The virgin's name was Mary. Having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, you highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was greatly troubled at the saying, and considered what kind of salutation this might be. The angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and give birth to a son, and will call his name Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. There will be no end to his kingdom. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, seeing I am a virgin? The angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore also the Holy One who is born from you will be called the Son of God. Now, there's a few things that I want us to take note in the scripture. At that time when the angel appeared, 
Mary was a virgin pledged to be married. And there are not many women who would accept such a call at such a time in their life. There are not many women who would accept such a calling, such a purpose, such a destiny at the time they are getting married. I can imagine she was excited for a marriage that was coming up and then suddenly the angel appears and gives her this divine mandate to carry the baby Jesus that he would be born through her. Now, she could have reacted any other way. She could have said no. She could have resisted. She could have fought against this calling. But Mary was willing and obedient. She was willing to do what God had called her to do. She was willing to fulfill her purpose and her destiny. This was her purpose and destiny. And because of her willingness, we see the fruit of the life of Jesus and how many millions have come to the Lord and been reconciled back to God. If she was not willing, it would have been very difficult for this to happen. It would have been a different situation. But she was willing. She was obedient. And she followed the call. Now, that call was given to Mary because Mary found favor in God's eyes. God singled her out as someone who would be willing and obedient. Which is why we need to practice this in our lives. But we see the same thing also in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 1 from verse 18 to verse 24. With regards to Joseph, the man that Mary was supposed to be married to. If I read to you from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 1 from verse 18 to verse 24, we see it says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was like this. After his mother Mary, was engaged to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man, not willing to make her a public example, intended to put her away secretly. But when he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, Son of David, don't be afraid to take yourself, Mary, your wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She shall give birth to a son. You shall call his name Jesus. For it is he who shall save his people from their sins. Now all this had happened that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall give birth to a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us. Joseph arose from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took his wife to himself. Now, there are a few things that we can note. The first thing is Joseph's bloodline could be traced back all the way to Abraham. It could be traced back to the bloodline of David. And likewise, if Joseph resisted his calling and his purpose and destiny to take Mary as his wife, what we are seeing today, the fruits of the full and finished work of the cross, would not have been accomplished. But he was willing. 
there are not many men who are about to be married and then their wife is found to be with child and then still go on and marry. But Joseph was willing. He took heed to the instruction of the angel of the Lord that was sent to him. If Mary and Joseph were not obedient to their calling, they would have hindered God's plan to save mankind. This is why it is so important that we follow our purpose and our destiny. You may not see it clearly now, but your purpose and your destiny plays a role in the bigger picture. And because Joseph and Mary were obedient to God, and they fulfilled their purpose and destiny, the Christ could come in the world, and He could be born, He could live an immaculate life, and he could accomplish his mission. He came, he lived an immaculate life, and he saved mankind. He took up our punishment upon himself. And through him, through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, many have been saved. This is why it is so important that we follow our purpose and our destiny and the will that God has for our life. This is why it is so important that we listen to Jesus. And saying that, my dear friend, let us go into a time of prayer. I want to pray with you and for you that God will bless you, even on this Christmas Eve, that He will give you the willingness and obedience to follow your purpose and destiny. In saying that, let us begin by praising God for a few moments. Father, we praise you and we thank you. We thank you for your goodness towards our lives. And we thank you that you don't leave us helpless, you don't leave us alone. You guide us and you speak to us. You show us the way. You say, this is the way, walk in it. And you are good and your mercy endures forever. Your mercy truly endures forever. And you make a way where there seems to be no way. You make a way in our lives. And we are grateful for your goodness and your mercy towards our lives. Be glorified and be magnified in the name of Jesus. Be lifted high. Father, thank you for the loved ones that you have placed around us. Thank you for the people that are with us. Thank you that you never leave us helpless. You never leave us alone. You speak to us and you guide us. You show us the way. Take us to a greater glory and a greater level. In the name of Jesus. Amen and Amen. My dear friend, I discern God's presence and I know, I trust, I believe God is going to bless you. Now as we begin to pray, I encourage you, comment and agree, connect in faith, believe and receive. Father, I pray for my dear friend. Even today, as I pray for my dear friend, bless my dear friend mightily, 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 and give my dear friend grace, as you gave Mary grace, as you gave Joseph grace, to fulfill their purpose and destiny, to accomplish your will for their lives, that they may play a part in the bigger picture knowing how important it is. We give you praise and we thank you for Jesus. Even on this Christmas Eve, we thank you that you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to come in likeness of man, without sin, without blemish. And he took our punishment upon himself, and because of what he did, we can be saved, we can be born again, and we can go to a greater glory, a greater level. Be glorified and be magnified in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and Amen. My dear friend, God bless you and God keep you. God bless you on this Christmas Eve. Join me tomorrow again for another message, a special Christmas message that will bless you. 
and it will take you to a greater glory. Until then, may the grace of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. In Jesus' name. Thank you for watching. If you were blessed by this video and you would like to support us to keep making content like this, you can do so via PayPal or Patreon. The links are provided in the description. God bless you and goodbye.